For a thousand years, the Galactic Republic flourished, with the Jedi Order maintaining the peace. Slowly and without need for violence or war, the Republic expanded across the galaxy, spreading their values of democracy, equality, and justice to all member worlds. And while many planets did indeed thrive under Republic rule, those outside their borders were often left to their own devices, becoming a refuge for mercenaries, pirates, and those escaping the law. Without the Jedi or Republic judicials to enforce rules and regulations, the Outer Rim became a land of wild ambition, where men might make their fortune. But with these opportunities and freedoms came great risk and suffering. Slavery was a common practice in the Outer Rim, with worlds often deeply stratified between rich and poor. Planets like Tatooine became home for crime families like the Huts, while Eriadu was ruled by the Tarkin family who brought order and relative prosperity to the world through iron-fisted authority. The Tarkins even implemented an Outland Region Security Force, combining the resources of several Outer Rim worlds, creating a fleet capable of dealing with rampant piracy within the Seswana Sector. Over time, the people of the Outer Rim began to resent the rich and comfortable planets of the Republic, believing them responsible for their difficult conditions. As a result, a culture of animosity and hostility for the Republic developed on many of these worlds. Isolated from the devastation and poverty of the Outer Rim, the Republic grew complacent and became corrupted from within. Though the Galactic Senate and the Office of the Chancellor were elected to deal with potential conflict through peaceful means, the political process became mired in bureaucracy and games of political ambition. The Jedi considered themselves allies and servants of the Republic, but did not think it appropriate to interfere in matters of politics, and so were unable to prevent the factionalism and partisanship of the Senate, blinding themselves to the possible consequences of deep political turmoil. Yet not all Jedi were unaware of the potential for war. It was Jedi Master Sifo Diaz who foresaw a major conflict approaching. He urged the Jedi High Council to commission a standing army for the Republic, but was met with outrage and indignation. Sifo Diaz was expelled from the High Council, but determined to go on, he traveled in secret to the planet of Kamino, where he ordered the creation of a clone army. It would take several years for the clones to grow mature and ready for combat, but Sifo Diaz was confident they would be necessary, and so acted alone, believing he was the only person to know of the plan. Yet he was deceived, for another had become aware of his schemes and sought to take advantage of the situation. After the death of Darth Bane, his apprentice became master of the Sith, and in keeping with the rule of two, took on a single apprentice, teaching him the secrets of their order. With only two Sith ever alive at one time, the only method of advancement for an apprentice would be to kill their master and take their their place. And so the relationship was maintained on a balance of loyalty and strength. As long as a master was strong, the apprentice owed absolute obedience. Yet, if either one of them wavered in their strength or loyalty, the other would have license to attack, leaving only a single Sith alive to find a new apprentice and begin the process again. Eventually, Darth Plagueis the Wise came to power and took on as his apprentice, Sheev Palpatine of Naboo, who took the name Darth Sidious. Plagueis was a powerful Dark Lord who found the secret of manipulating the Force to prevent himself from aging, and may even have had the ability to prevent his own death and the death of others. Together with his apprentice, they hatched a plan to take over the Senate and Republic so they might have their vengeance against the Jedi, and to fulfill the vow of revenge sworn by Darth Bane so many years earlier. And so Sidious, known to the rest of the galaxy only as Palpatine, worked his way into the political system, becoming a senator for his home world. Plagueis, however, would remain in the shadows, ruling through Sidious. Yet in keeping with the traditions of the Sith, the apprentice came to see the subtlety of Plagueis as a weakness, and so murdered his master in his sleep. Sidious Sidious then rose to the rank of master, and in keeping with the rule of two, took on Darth Maul of Dathomir as his apprentice, training him first as a dark side assassin, and only after the death of Plagueis, trained him as a Sith, wielding a dual-bladed red lightsaber. For years, Sidious, acting as Senator Palpatine, manipulated the system from within, finding allies and earning a reputation as a man of action and integrity. While in secret, he took every opportunity to corrupt and manipulate the process for his own benefit. And so, when Sifo Diaz approached the Kaminoans for a clone army, Sidious became aware of his actions, and contacted Lama Su, the Prime Minister of Kamino, arranging for every clone soldier to be implanted with an inhibitor chip that would allow Darth Sidious to gain control of the entire army at the moment of his choosing. Darth Sidious then ordered the death of the Jedi Master, ordering the fallen Jedi Count Dooku to complete the task. Dooku arranged for the Pike Syndicate to shoot down his ship above the moon of Obadiah. 32 years before the Battle of Yavin, Sidious was at last prepared to unleash the revenge of the Sith against the Jedi Order, beginning with what came to be known as the Naboo Crisis. 
The Trade Federation, an enormous merchant conglomerate with its own representation in the Senate, was outraged by the Republic's decision to begin taxing free trade zones, and so allied with Darth Sidious, who convinced them to use their droid army to blockade the relatively weak and unprotected planet of Naboo, thereby pressuring the Senate to abolish the new tax laws. In response, Senate Chancellor Valorum and the Jedi High Council sent Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi to negotiate terms with the Trade Federation to bring about a peaceful resolution to the conflict. But Sidious, uninterested in peace, ordered the Federation to kill the Jedi and begin a ground invasion of the planet. Despite the betrayal, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan survived and were able to rescue Queen Amidala from Naboo, hiding her on the planet of Tatooine for a time. There, they found a young slave boy named Anakin Skywalker and sensed in him great force potential. After learning that the boy was conceived through the Force, Qui-Gon came to believe he was the Chosen One, who ancient prophecies stated would bring balance to the Force. He then arranged for the boy to be freed and taken to to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Yet as they prepared to leave Tatooine, Darth Maul attacked and the Sith at last revealed themselves to the Jedi. And while Qui-Gon and the others were able to escape unharmed, the High Council was greatly disturbed to learn of the re-emergence of the Sith Order. Back on Coruscant, the Trade Federation was able to use loopholes and bureaucratic tricks to block and delay any investigation into the invasion of Naboo. Senator Palpatine, feigning loyalty to his home world, then organized an opposition to Chancellor Valorum, convincing the Senate he was responsible for the failures of government. After a vote of no confidence, Senator Palpatine used all his connections and influence to be elected as the new Chancellor of the Republic promising to end the corruption of the Senate and return peace to the galaxy. But Queen Amidala grew impatient and unwilling to leave the fate of her planet to politicians, and so returned to Naboo alongside Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi, assigned to protect the Queen. Young Anakin also accompanied them, despite the hesitation of Yoda and the Council, who initially rejected Anakin Skywalker, claiming he was too old and fearful to become a Jedi. But Qui-Gon disobeyed the Council and took the boy on as his apprentice, claiming Obi-Wan was ready for the trials to become a full Jedi Knight. On Naboo, Queen Amidala worked quickly, organizing a defense of her planet alongside the native Gungan race who lived in the waters of their world. While the Gungans distracted the Federation's droid army in battle, the Queen and Jedi who accompanied her would attack the palace to capture the Trade Federation leadership. Yet as they made their way through, they were confronted by Darth Maul. Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi stayed behind and engaged the Sith Lord, resulting in the death of Qui-Gon Jinn. Upon seeing the fall of his master, Obi-Wan was able to defeat Maul, cutting him in two and sending him falling down a cavernous shaft. Qui-Gon's final words to Obi-Wan instructed him to take on Anakin as an apprentice, once again claiming the boy was the Chosen One. Obi-Wan agreed. Though the Trade Federation was defeated and Naboo liberated, they were only ever pawns for the larger game being played by the Sith Lord Darth Sidious. And despite the appearance of a defeat, he had in fact succeeded in his plans, having used the Naboo Crisis to get himself elected as Chancellor. Though Darth Maul was believed dead, having been cut in half by Obi-Wan Kenobi, he was so powerful in the dark side and his hatred so strong, he survived the event and went on to seek revenge against the Jedi and redemption for his failure. His journey would see his body restored and reunite him with his brother, Savage Opress, who was made a powerful dark side user by the witches of Dothamir. Together, Maul and Savage used their mighty powers to build an army, taking Mandalore as their realm. Meanwhile, Darth Sidious, believing Maul dead, chose the fallen Jedi Count Dooku as his apprentice. Darth Tyrannus, as he was named, was then ordered to begin a secessionist movement within the Republic, fracturing the galaxy and plunging it into war. He obeyed, and over several years his populist movement grew, most strongly in the mid and outer rim where resentment against the bureaucratic corruption of the Senate had long been growing. Thousands of worlds left the Republic and pledged themselves to the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Chancellor Palpatine then used the secessionist threat to pass the Military Creation Act, allowing for the Republic to raise an army to defeat the Separatists. The Jedi and Senate, unaware that both sides of the conflict were being manipulated by Sith Lords, took the Separatist threat seriously and made the decision to use the recently discovered clone army of Kamino as Republic forces against Dooku and his droid Armada. The Clone Wars, as they became known, dragged on for many years, utterly devastating both sides. During the war, Anakin Skywalker developed into one of the most powerful Jedi in the galaxy, taking on an apprentice of his own in Ahsoka Tano, who also proved strong in the Force. 
Anakin also grew closer to Chancellor Palpatine and fell in love with Padme Amidala, violating the Jedi Code by marrying her in secret. Chancellor Palpatine took every opportunity to encourage Anakin's independent thinking, even organizing his own kidnapping, manipulating events so that Anakin and Obi-Wan would have to face Count Dooku for his rescue. The Sith Apprentice defeated Obi-Wan, but was then defeated by Anakin Skywalker and beheaded at the order of Palpatine. With his Sith Apprentice dead, Palpatine introduced Anakin to the ways of the dark side and revealed himself as a Sith Lord. Anakin reported the discovery to Mace Windu, who along with the Jedi Masters Kit Fisto, Aegon Kolar, and Saisi Tin, attempted to arrest the Sith Lord Chancellor. Sidious killed all the Jedi, save Mace Windu, who was able to turn his Force Lightning against him, and was about to land the finishing blow when Anakin Skywalker cut off his arm, allowing for Sidious to send Master Windu flying out a window to his death. Anakin had fallen to the dark side, believing that only with the help of Darth Sidious would he be able to prevent the death of his wife and unborn child. Sidious named Anakin Darth Vader and ordered him to kill the last of the Separatist leadership to bring about an end to the Clone Wars. In the year 19 before the Battle of Yavin, with the attempt on his life a failure, Sidious pronounced Order 66, triggering the inhibitor chips in all clone soldiers. The clones turned against their Jedi generals, murdering them even as they fought side by side. The Great Jedi Purge, as it came to be known, finally granted the Sith their vengeance against the Jedi Order. Sidious then ordered Darth Vader to lead the assault against the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, personally killing Jedi younglings as his initiation into the Sith. Having survived the initial purge, Obi-Wan Kenobi tracked down Anakin and upon seeing his fall to the dark side, set out to destroy his former apprentice. The two battled viciously, but Obi-Wan came out the ultimate victor, cutting off Anakin's legs and an arm, leaving him to burn in the fires of Mustafar. Padme Amidala died soon after learning of Anakin's fall to the dark side, but was able to successfully give birth to twins, naming them Luke and Leia before her passing. The children of Anakin Skywalker were split up, with Obi-Wan taking the boy to Tatooine to live with relatives of Anakin's mother, and the girl given to Bail Organa, who would raise her as a princess of Alderaan. Though the Purge devastated the Jedi, some did survive, such as Grandmaster Yoda, who went into exile on Dagobah, having learned from the Force that it was his destiny to wait for one whom might restore the Jedi Order. With the Separatists and Jedi both defeated, Chancellor Palpatine dissolved the Republic and declared himself Emperor of the First Galactic Empire. Darth Vader was rescued from Mustafar and given a machine body and respirator mask to keep him alive and mobile. Vader, now consumed by his anger and hatred for the Jedi and all he once stood for, was ordered to lead the hunt against Jedi survivors in order to ensure their complete annihilation. A special thanks to all those who have contributed to Civilization X. You make these videos possible, and I am eternally grateful for your support. If you would like to help Civilization X and want to say in the future content of this channel, click on the Patreon link in the description box below and pledge any amount you'd like on a monthly basis. Or if you'd prefer to make a single donation, you can use the PayPal link also in the description below. And please be sure to like and subscribe and click on the links to see more.